Hey there, uh, in this short demo, we will see how can we re-trigger field messages from the cloud integration. So there has always been some sort of discussion or the comparison of the product when we compare it with the on-prem integration product like PAPO, where we are having a capability of re-triggering the field messages. So in cloud integration, there is a possibility for doing that as well, but yeah, uh, as such SAP is not giving this option. So there's a dedicated adapter. Like uh, if you are going to use a GMS adapter, you can build your scenarios to re-trigger the field messages where you can hold the messages in a queue and you can reprocess in case of any failures. But yeah, uh, that adapter and designing comes with some more level of constraint as such because it is going to uh, store the message in the queue and your queues, manner queue management and all those stuff come into picture. But what about the cases if the customer, they are not in a mood or they are not planning to use a GMS adapter, is there is a way? So we can discuss that. So there are some set of iFlows which I have designed. We can consider those as uh, an utility where we can migrate those iFlows and we can design the re-trigger mechanism. So we will see uh, in a moment. But before that, primarily the messages can be filled at three layers, at the extract transmission or at the load level. So for this particular scenario, we are not concerned about the extract because that can be very well managed by the source. If source is down, source system can anyways, they can push the data or uh, whenever the source is up, we can start extracting data from the source. But what about the cases when we have received the message and we are doing some transformation, it is failing because of the transformation. And if it is passed to the transformation layer, what about the cases if it is failed at the target while loading? So these two uh, scenarios we will see. And again, uh, the transformation is again categorized into two more sections, means the transformation can be failing because of the mapping logic, which is implemented within the cloud integration or because of the data which is coming from the source. If there is an issue with the data, so again, that needs to be taken care by the uh, by the business or the source team who are responsible for managing data. But we will see how can we do that. So we have to design a couple of iFlows. So the very first iFlow, which uh, we will be calling it as a dispenser flow. So this is going to be a common iFlow. So what this iFlow is meant for, we will be giving the endpoint URL of a cloud integration, this endpoint URL can be consumed by the n number of sources and they can push the data to our cloud integration and specific to their business need, we will be creating separate iFlows based on the business uh, business requirement. But how it will be identified that which particular request should go to which particular uh, business process uh, flow. For that, we have created a value mapping. So that value mapping uh, we will maintain that table which will actually help us to identify which particular process needs to be picked for a particular request. So once that has been identified, we will move to the second. The This is going to the main business flow which will be responsible for meeting the business requirement. So in this case, we will be having the payload and then if everything goes well, then it will be uh, moving the data to the target and in case of any failures, so what we are going to do, we will be capturing those payload in a data store and this data, data store is going to be a, a, a global data store and once we are having the payload stored at somewhere, we can pull those payloads from a different altogether retrigger iFlow. So this iFlow is the one, the utility iFlow. So in case of any failures, we're going to run this particular flow and we can schedule it uh, and again, we can we can also tweak it as per the need. But uh, for the current case, I am running it uh, based on the ad hoc and I'm going to pull the particular payload and some more information 
while storing the data to the data store, we will be holding the process flow ID so that which particular process flow needs to be triggered. It will be identified through this and we are also capturing the error. So just in case if someone wants to build some more logic on top of this solution that for this for the particular errors only we want to re-trigger. So that can also be identified through this particular value which we are going to get it from the source in case of any failures and anyways the payload we are going to store it in under this payload tag so this is how we will be designing our entire integration so let's go to the system so these are the set of integrations which i have already built so if we just open the very first one so this i flow this is the endpoint which i am going to give to the source and here i am going to call the value mapping and based on the value mapping i am going to trigger the target system i mean target process the business process so it's a value mapping table where i have mentioned the header which i'm expecting so let's say in case of any orders so if i'm receiving the payload for orders it will just hit the orders business process so this value mapping we can very well maintain here for a number of systems so once we are done with that the second i flow what we are going to do so we will be passing the we will calling the process direct adapter for the particular process so once that particular process is being identified and kicked in so here we have also set some of the header parameters so who is the sender and in case of any errors and all all those stuffs we have created some header parameters which we are going to access it so once uh, the payload is received within the integration we have so this is the these two message mappings are basically primarily the business use case where the entire business logic specific to a process is being implemented so in case of any failure within this particular uh, integration of the transformation then it is going to call an exception sub process and within exception sub process we have set the final body means what would be the name of the process flow because this is what we are going to use to trigger the error message and similarly we are st uh, storing the exception and the entire set of payload so once that is done we are going to store it to a right variable global variable and the entity id for the timing i am just setting it as the system generated id so let's go to the system let's say this is my request and this request is for the orders so i am sending as a sender as a header and the value is orders and this is what the payload and the moment i send it across it is now successfully it has triggered the entire scenario so if i just refresh it and go to the monitoring and if, if i just check for the messages so you will see that both the integrations so we triggered the integration one it automatically it triggered the second integration as well so let's do some more changes to the payload so i i am just failing this payload basically there's some mandatory fields are expecting so it, it is now failed if i again go back to the monitoring and you will see now there are two field messages are there and if i come to this data store section i will be able to see an entry here with the data store okay you can download it so primarily the issue is with the payload if i go back just a moment yeah so if you see here the target access is required so this entire error message is also captured in the final payload with the with the uh, with the incoming payload as well so let me go back to the third eye flow so this is the one which we are going to trigger so if you just open it the main retrigger integration so here we are receiving we are getting the payload 
from the data store so let's say let me let me try to pull this particular id so i'm just copying it and i'm going to configure and i will just replace it with this id save it let me the trace so if i again try to push it what will happen it will again fail because there is some mandatory fields are missing so what we can do so either we have to fix the payload or if there is a mapping issue the integrator consultant can come to the second i flow and they can fix the mapping so let's trigger this again so we have set it and let me deploy it so once i will deploy it is going to fail again because so we will we'll see another entry over here two more entries we will see now so if we see here this is again failed so or probably let me second one where we will able to see this process again fail and if you see in the logs you will able to see at which so it is failing at the masses mapping and once it is failed it has come to the alert section and it has again erased the alert so let's fix this payload so for that what i am going to do i have just created one integration which will just override the existing data store so let me just edit it so i have made the exact payload and i have added the order date this is what we deleted when we ran it initially so let me update the id this entity id we will just update it we will just try to override this entity id so that save and deploy so now this entity id is updated so we will again come back to the our main flow but before that let me enable the traces so that we will be able to understand what's happening so i have enabled the trace for the second and the retrigger flow i have also enabled and i have all already configured the entity id which i am supposed to push so 7a this is the one so we will just push it deploy it and now if we come back to our section yeah so if you see here now the one which we triggered just now is successful okay so now it is successfully pushed and if i again come back to the data store after retriggering the entry will also be deleted from the data store so this is how the entire life cycle will execute so again coming back to our main whiteboarding so this is the flow so this will once that is successfully executed it is going to delete the data stores the error records so i hope this finds interesting you can implement the same in your respective projects thank you